Hey, what's up guys? Garrett here from Code the Web, and in this final video in our uh, web design basic series, we're going to be talking about spacing, shape, and just the overall way that you use all of these concepts uh, with, within your elements for your, uh, for your website. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is what's called the data to ink ratio, or in this case, the data to pixel ratio. So the idea behind this is basically how much information can you provide for every pixel that you use? So in this example, or the th actually three examples that we have here, in the first example, we see a normal chart with um, plotted points on the chart, and then there's lines connecting each point. And it's very easy to understand what's going on. Of course, maybe on the bottom, uh, we have the, you know, the time measurement. And on the top, we have the actual unit of measurement that we're looking to uh, determine uh, based on the time. Um, but then in this next example, we're going to shade in the bottom of it. And what you're going to see is that it doesn't really help us out at all. Um, in fact, it doesn't provide any inf uh, more information. It really just kind of takes up something aesthetically to look at. It's more to look at. It's more to process for your user. But it doesn't actually add to what the information is that you're sending to your user. It doesn't really do anything for it. Obviously, that's too much. Um, you're not providing any more information, but you're using a lot of pixels. But in this next example, we're going to take away back to how we were before with just those uh, the plots and then the lines connecting each of the points. But we're going to now take away the, uh, the lines that connect each point. And now what we see is basically just a cluster of dots. It doesn't really do anything for us. You can't really see, or it's hard to see, the relationship between each point as we go farther and farther in time. And that's not good either, because in this case, we're not providing enough information, and we're also not using enough pixels to provide that information. So there's a sweet spot, a balance, that you want to maintain in providing information along with the amount of pixels that you actually use on the screen. Now, as we mentioned in what I believe was the last video, um, objects or elements of a similar size are perceived to be related to one another or just automatically grouped together. This also continues into objects that are spaced near each other. So if there's not that much spacing between each object and there's maybe a cluster of objects, they can be perceived to be uh, related or in the same group. And our brains kind of do this automatically. Here we have a four by four grid um, of squares basically. And it's really easy for us to assume that all 16 of these squares are related or are grouped together because of some relation, what doesn't really matter what it is. Um, we don't know the content um, that's being used in this certain situation and the content could be different depending on your website, but we can assume that they are related. The key here to remember is that the reason we're able to assume this is because they're A, very close to one another, but B, the distance between each one on both the right, the left, as well as the top and the bottom is all equal. Now, in this next example, we're going to make um, or add distance on the right and the left of each one of these squares, and all of a sudden, it changes a little bit. The dynamic is now such that we no longer have a grid of 16 squares. We now have four columns, each of four squares. So now, the relationship between each one of these elements is slightly different. Although they might still be related in some way, uh, it is still pretty different. Let's look at this in terms of an actual website. Uh, so in your website, you might have a very common layout is an F layout. And I don't know if I made a video on this. If not, I'm going to look back and I will. But basically an F layout kind of is um, it's very common in blogs, for example. So uh, let's say you have two columns. You have your main content column on the left or the right. It doesn't really matter. In this example, it's on the, on the right. On the left or the right, in this example, it's on the left, we have our sidebar. And the sidebar is all secondary information, such as you know your Twitter feed, your social media links. It doesn't really matter, whatever. Now, in this first example, there is an equal amount of spacing between uh, not just the sidebar, but also different elements within the main content section. And because of this, we can kind of assume that even though there is a sidebar, these elements are still very, very related, even though that is probably not the case. And we can assume that that's not the case because it's a sidebar versus the main content area. And we as web designers know that, but to the untrained eye or someone who's just looking at your website, they're probably not going to be able to tell. And because they're not going to be able to tell, they might get mistaken thinking that it's all one big content area when in reality it's not. So here's what we can do to fix that problem. Just like we did in the last example with the columns versus the grid, uh, we're going to put some spacing or some extra pixels in between the left column and the right column or the main column and the secondary column. Um, so this is going to kind of differentiate the two and making it seem or appear, and this is what we want of course, it's going to make it appear as if they are not completely related. The information is different in both of the areas. Now what's also I want you guys to see in this second example here is that 
we're now getting into ratios as well because now the uh, before in the last example the distance between that main like let's say it's an image area the distance between that and let's say it is text right below it was the same as the distance between that and the sidebar but now we're getting into ratios because we now have we're keeping that distance but since we're adding distance in between the sidebar and the main content there's now a ratio that we're using and we can use that throughout our website to kind of um, establish a hierarchy and establish how we want them to perceive the information that we're providing them. This just isn't only applicable to just general elements. It's also applicable to individual elements such as text. When you have, let's say, a blog post, in your blog post, you're probably going to have a minimum of three elements within your blog post. You're going to have the title, you're going to have some like secondary, maybe a um, uh, a subtitle or some meta information like the, you know, the author, the date, the you know, view count, whatever. And then you're going to have the actual main content. So three or four different types of elements within your one overall element, which is the article. Now, one thing you want to do is you want to keep that ratio flowing. Maybe it's not the same ratio, but definitely a ratio nevertheless. Since the subtitle and the actual title are somewhat related, what you want to do is you want to have a little or a smaller amount of distance in between those two, whereas the distance between those two things and the article should be more. In this example here, we have, let's say it is a 10 pixel um, spacing between the title and the subtitle, but then in between the subtitle and the actual content or the article, we're going to have, let's say 15 or 20 pixels. So the ratio would be a two to one or a 1.5 to one or something like that. In conclusion, for really this entire series, Design, it kind of just boils down to a bunch of very, very simple concepts that if used right and if used in the right way together can be helpful or useful in creating a beautiful web design, but also design in general. And I think it's really important to not forget these concepts. If you understand these concepts, it'll be much easier for you to go forward and create beautiful websites or improve already existing websites that you may have. Everything that we talked about, shape, alignment, direction, uh, visual hierarchy, uh, spacing, all these things are found every day in our real world lives. So doesn't it make sense that we would carry them over to the design world, the digital world, to use them in things that we interact with on our computer on a daily basis? I kind of think it does. Um, if you guys enjoyed this series or just this video, or whatever, definitely hit that subscribe button. Also check out my other channel, uh, the Code the Web, uh, Facebook group, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next week in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.